you guys. It's me. Hi vlog. It's home. <laughs> I'm a morning person. I'm yeah. really on one right now. We're not. She is. We're not. But we're heading to Bethlehem and the Herodium and the Mount of Olives, so we can't complain, okay? <laughs> So we are at uh, the Shepherd's Field. I've never actually been to this location before that I can remember. Um, so this isn't the actual site of the Church of the Nativity, which is traditionally known um, as the place of Jesus' birth. But this is a place where a lot of tourists come. Um, there's a lot of caves here and a chapel that honors the tradition of the shepherds being told by the angel about Jesus' birth or the host of angels about Jesus' birth. So it's a pretty cool place. The professor was saying most of the things here or like the caves and the ruins are from the Byzantine time but it's still pretty cool to get kind of a feel um, for the landscape and the hills and maybe the caves that the shepherds would have been in who knows crawling through the caves we're crawling through the caves crawling through the caves I'm claustrophobic we don't know where we're going oh, we're in the shepherd's cave one of them <laughs> We're gonna head to Bethlehem next to the Church of the Nativity and see what happens. Okay guys, so we are at the Church of the Nativity. So this is traditionally the spot where Jesus was born. You can get into a very, very long line. Um, very long, we're not gonna do that right now. To go down into the cave. Um, or you can touch like the stone that they think was a part of the cave where Jesus was born. Constantine's mother found this spot and marked it as a holy spot about 300 years after Jesus' birth. So, I mean, even if it's not the exact stone, it's like close. It's a good place it's, to be. Look, look, it's beautiful. Um, and there's a Byzantine church and the star. You can also go to the other side of the church where St. Jerome translated the Hebrew Old Testament into Latin. So that's great. So we're gonna go to the Milk Grotto. It's the place where traditionally Mary stopped to feed Jesus. And so there's a beautiful chapel there. We're at Stars and Bucks. Gonna get a coffee. Finally experiencing this place. We're going to the Herodium. Hiking up. The top of the Herodium. We've arrived. There's a lot of cool parts in the Herodium, but I'm most stoked about this. So, this used to be the place where Herod had triclinium meals, and if that word sounds familiar, it's not necessarily like in the Bible as a triclinium meal, but we know from the setup that Jesus is the last, the last supper of Jesus would have been a triclinium setup. And also when John the Baptist, when Herod's daughter, not Herod the Great, the other Herod, when his daughter um, asked for John the Baptist's head, it would have been at a banquet like this. It's not set up like a triclinium meal because there was two Jewish revolts and they turned this place into a synagogue. So you can see like the pillars, 
you can see where people would sit like this um and it's just pretty cool this place has a ton of history from herod the great all the way through these jewish revolts and we're about to go down some tunnels in the jew the second jewish revolt the bar the sister i should figure out how to say that <laughs> we're studying it we'll get there. but the other thing that's super interesting is that um this mound, I didn't know this until now, and I've been here several times, but there's like all this earth that's built upon this Herodium, like built up to make like a mountain, and that didn't happen until Herod died. He covered this fortress in dirt, most likely to make his mausoleum that honors his death, like stand out. So there you go, that's Herodium. just under the Herodium, which is up there. Um, and we were just learning about how the Herodium, which was one of Herod's fortresses, was this, you know, big center of Roman power. And then it faces its buildings, face Jerusalem, which is right over here. And Herod's also ruling over there. He could see his palace from a tower that used to be up here. And so Bethlehem is right in between these two Roman powers. It's this little town of Bethlehem where we just were. Um, and so it really gives great imagery to how Jesus was born in the shadow of the Roman Empire. First century tomb right now. <laughs> don't know how I feel about it. I don't really want to lay down. That freaks me out. Like bodies were in here. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. Guys, look at, look at. There's a camel. Guys, <laughs> dreams do come true. Okay, we're on the Mount of Olives, about to descend. David came up the Mount of Olives weeping, Jesus came down as the true king, also weeping. Note. Now we're going to head down to the next church, the Garden of Gethsemane Church, which is called the Church of All Nations. Yeah. <laughs> so these are called the nefesh. The bodies aren't buried in there, but it represents and honors the person who died. And they're buried in these burial caves that we were just in. campus in the laundry room from tombs to laundry living the best life here um i shouldn't be up right now it's really late and tomorrow we're going on another field trip and we have to leave at 7 a.m be on the bus so get ready for that video and make sure to subscribe if you like videos like this so you don't miss when i post my next adventure so thanks for coming with me and i'll see you next time